Hello, welcome to today's EdFAC series. And today I'm gonna to expand on the different types of assessments and how they apply to an instructional model as used in K-12 schools. So first of all, let me just real quickly say, this is the model under which most instruction happens. So you assess and then use that assessment to deliver instruction. And then that instruction is sort of reflect on through additional testing the teacher can adjust what they teach and then it, it adjusts your instruction. So there's this assessment instruction cycle. Sometimes this is informal, sometimes it's formal, um, but it's really about when you teach something, you're getting feedback. Did the student learn it? Do I need to reteach it? And so this is what we call the AI model. Now, where things get very confusing in K-12 education is the definition of assessments, right? And this is where there's so much misinformation and just confusion about what is exactly a certain type of test. So I'm going to go through this and explain it. So this is an operational AI model, meaning in practice, when you look at that A, there's all different sorts of assessments. So let me go through these one by one and explain what they mean. So initially, there are some universal screeners. And what a screener is, a screener means it's an assessment that's meant to be short. It's meant to tell you real quickly, yay or nay. Is the student on grade level or are they not? Are they doing well here or are they not? It's, it's meant to be very fast, usually 10 to 15 minutes, and that's sort of the definition of a screener. Now, the next one you see is grade level accountability. This is gonna be your state test. State tests assess students at the end of each year. So they test them only on the material that they're expected to have learned by the end of the year. So at the end of, of third grade, the end of fourth grade, the end of eighth grade, they give them some items and they say, did they master this or not? And then again, they get an accountability measure, which is above grade level, um, you know, uh, proficient, below proficient, non-proficient. And so it's really a tiered score relative to their grade level. Now, the next type of assessment is grade level benchmarking. This is usually given by the district throughout the year. So maybe beginning, middle, end, or maybe it's four times a year. This tells them whether the student is on track for that period of time. So the beginning of the year, are they at the beginning of fifth grade? Are they at the middle of fifth grade? Are they at the, at the end of fifth grade? Again, these grade level benchmarks give items that one would expect students to have learned at that period of time, all right? So again, it's, it's, it gives you sort of like an accountability measure, gives you an idea of where they're at. And again, the results will be above, at, or below um, that expected point. Now, Interim state assessments can also fall under grade level benchmarks. It just depends on whether a state has an interim assessment. All right, the next idea, our next area is diagnostics, and we have the limited above that. So a limited diagnostic is something that tells you what to do. So if there's a student in reading or math who is struggling, the diagnostics will tell you, ah, why is that student struggling? Again, not just saying they're below grade level, that's not enough, it's why and what do I do about it? Now, I say limited because limited diagnostics may not work for all students. It may work if the student's you know, close to grade level, but if the student's really far, many years below, or maybe the student has an IEP or disability, then it may not give you enough information. So that's why I say it's limited. Generally speaking, limited diagnostics are assessments that have a, a shorter dynamic range. They're not gonna go very, very far below grade level or really, really far above grade level. It's really still hovering around a student's grade level. Now, a genuine diagnostic, which I'm making up that term uh, for this, this demonstration, it doesn't necessarily exist, but in my opinion, a genuine diagnostic is something that regardless of the, of the student's grade level, it will tell you what to do. So the teacher says, why is Richard struggling? He's a 10th grader in reading. It'll tell you what to do. In special education, you absolutely have to have a genuine diagnostic because you're required by law to have an individual education program for each student. So you need to know the student's present level, where they're at, and their instructional points. So you need a genuine diagnostic. Now, the next thing we have down there on the bottom that's sitting by itself is formative assessments. Formative assessments mean it tells a teacher whether something, a student has learned something or not. So generally speaking, they're quizzes. So I teach someone how to multiply two digit by one digit. Right now I taught a student and did they learn it? So I give them a short quiz. So immediately it gives me feedback on what I taught. Okay, I taught someone else 
uh, the beginning sound, uh, b. Did they learn the beginning sound? I can give them a quiz and test it right away. So that is what formative, and they're usually quizzes that are gonna be short and they immediately give feedback onto whether a student has learned something or not. So that is what falls under assessment. Now, when you take the different type of assessments and you drive it into instruction, this is where you have instruction. So if you had a placement test for a student that really just said, are they ready to go into fifth grade? Let's say it's a brand new student and you give them a very general assessment, that might be appropriate to place them into a grade level. And that's what core material is. So you're gonna have core material per grade. So fourth grade core material in math and reading and science and history, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, those are your core programs that um, tells you what to teach at that grade level. A supplemental instruction is something that's meant to augment that core. So yes, maybe the core is teaching everything, but maybe it's a little weak in a certain area. Um, or maybe you need something a little bit stronger or a different approach. So that's where a supplemental material will work. Now within supplemental, we have two groups there. We have supplemental materials that are group for, good for a group or a class, and we also have one-on-one -on -one supplemental materials. So one-on-one -on -one supplemental materials are the materials written for an individual student to, to take it or for a teacher to deliver it one-on-one. -on -one. Those will be a little different versus a group instruction, maybe something more geared towards having a group activity and have everyone working on it at the same time, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. You generally speaking have core and supplemental. Now, if we talk about the lower part on the I side, that is instruction, right? So this is, I'm actually just looking at online instruction right now. There's lots of different other kinds of instruction, but in this day and age right now, there's a lot of questions about automated online instruction. And so I really, really put it into three categories. There's automated online instruction that's just linearly placed, meaning this material starts off at K, goes up to eighth grade, and we determine where the student goes into it and we just place them in that linear path. That is not gonna be as efficient, but a lot of companies have linearly placed online assessments. Where it gets better is automated online that's differentiated. So that means we have still all this instruction, but we actually look what the student knows and doesn't know, and we assign individual lessons based on this diagnostic data. So generally speaking, differentiated automatic, automated online instruction requires a genuine diagnostic to drive it. If you don't have a genuine diagnostic, it's probably gonna be a linear placed automated online instruction, which is not as good, okay? Now the other uh, circle on the far right is teacher directed online. Also, it can come in the form of a teacher says, I know that Richard needs to learn three digit by two digit uh, multiplication. I'm gonna assign him a lesson. So maybe the teacher directs these online lessons to the student. Um, so it's teacher directed. That's it sort of in a nutshell. Hopefully this helps. The other thing I didn't explain is the little dotted line all the way around everything, right? The idea is you do this AI cycle so that students can hit the end of year grade level standards because every grade level has expectations. By the end of fifth grade, you're supposed to know certain levels of mathematics. You're supposed to know decimal place value. You're supposed to know, you know, all the different things. That's what sits in the end of year grade level standards. And so the idea is we do this AI cycle to get students to reach the standards by the end of the year for each grade level. All right, I hope that helps explain a little bit about the types of assessments. Um, thank you very much.